game everybody welcome back to a good audio listen and this time we're taking a short look at medieval fantasy rpg an awesome action bait choice game i'll be back at the end to give you some really cool tricks that are going to help you get by some of the harder scenarios but until then enjoy game double tap everyone welcome back again to medieval fantasy rpg wizard's choice or should we just climb up the wall and avoid them? I think for now, let's avoid them. Spider climb spell. Monitu. Button. Okay, let's do the spider climb spell. Spider climb spell. Monitu. Light. 12. Mana. 5. Gold. 1. Morel. 9. Dim. Mana decreases 2. Stands oh. up and you see that it has the body of a man with a long rat tail. <coughs> Wearer at the ring on Dorgan. It would appear it's now or never. What do you do? Spring out with your dagger. Button. That's all we can do, really. Lightning bolt, mana four, button. All right, now we have to do our little prison encounter and decide if we're going to escape or just wait. Continue, button. Okay, let's go. Continue. Continue. Light, 11, mana, 8, gold, 1, morale, 15. We got our mana back up to 8. Life increases 4. Ooh, life went up. That's cool. Nice. Mana increases 7. Nice. You are awakened at some point in the night by Muffle. Frightened shouts from somewhere in the dungeon. This is followed by gurgling and then, suddenly, nothing. What? It is beginning to rain. Drops. You are awakened at some point in the night by Muffle. Frightened shouts from somewhere in the dungeon. This is followed by gurgling and then, suddenly, nothing. What? What has gone on? You hear someone call in a trembling voice, presumably from another cell. There is no- The gods smile upon me. The woman has long blonde hair that frames large blue eyes and a delicate nose, ellipsis, and a scar that runs from her jaw down her neck. The scar is faint and only noticeable because her skin is otherwise flawless. When you can finally pull your eyes from her face, you see that she is wearing armor and a gold-colored cape that is customarily worn by clerics of Alathia, the goddess of protection. Such clerics are holy warriors skilled with armor and weapons. In addition, they can appeal to their patron goddess for modest gifts of divine aid, similar in some ways to your own magical spells. A guard stands behind her and appears to be staring at her rear. As though aware of his gaze, she turns her head slightly and says, Leave us, please. As the key gets near the keyhole, it begins to vibrate slightly and then the key blade length and shape morphs. Limundo's master key you realize with an excited shock. Such a magical key will fit any non-magical lock. The story goes that long ago, Limundo, the great wizard, created such keys for his friends and family, who were instructed to swallow their key if they were ever captured. Of course, over the centuries the keys began falling into unintended hands. Jala, where are you running to? One woman shouts as her presumed husband sprints away down the street. Despite those being possessed looking like everyone else, you track it more easily, simply following anyone who suddenly starts acting strangely. Finally, a possessed young boy chased by his scolding mother stops short of the Temple of Eternal Love. Faintly, you can see the shimmering shadow leave the child and dissolve into the large double doors of the temple. Is this it? At last? The Fiend's Lair? Having grown up in Ring City, you are familiar with all of the great landmarks. However, despite its size and grandeur, little is known about this temple or what goes on inside. In the rare event that members are seen, they seem to materialize out of nowhere, traveling in groups of four or more, wearing long yellow robes and smooth purple masks. As far as you know, no one has spotted anyone leaving the place, which has led to the children's story that there is a monster inside that eats all that enter. Given the name of the temple and the closely guarded privacy of its members, most adults believe the temple is merely a cult of promiscuity. Spurred on by this speculation when you were teenagers, you and Reginald had wanted to learn more about this temple and so you had once knocked on the front door. Nothing happened, but you remember an overwhelming feeling of dread. No one, not even city guards, go near it. Use a spell to climb. Mana 2. Button. Let's climb. Look for a secret door. Use a spell to climb. Mana 2. Button. Use a spell to climb. Mana Life. 5. Mana. 6. Gold. 1. Morale. 17. Dim. Mana decreases 2. Up the bare wall you go. Onto the balcony. You tie a rope to the leg of a statue and toss the other end down. Despite her chainmail, Nerissa climbs the rope with ease and so you are unable to tease her. There is a door into the temple from the balcony, which is locked, but your magical key takes care of that. The door opens to darkness. Nerissa lights a lantern and enters first. The air stinks of rotting meat. Like the outer wall, the hallway is made of polished granite. The door shuts behind you as though sensing you are inside. With some trepidation, you move forward. Suddenly, there is a snarl, and out of the darkness springs a gray-skinned man with a manacle around his neck with a chain trailing behind. Its body appears to be rotting. Oh, gross. WC2Gul.jpg, Imit the altar. You do not know these languages well, and so can only understand bits and pieces. However, it appears to be a sacrificial ceremony to the god of the undead, Neril. At one point, the Baron stands up, brings a scroll up and addresses the shadow directly. On Rol Sadith do Arganet Lachinia Wallet. Ellipsis. The Baron keeps intoning name after name in Mardith. You look over and meet Nerissa's frightened eyes. 
Obviously, she understands what you just realized, that this shadow is no mere ghost or dark poltergeist, but a demon. It is the structure of the name that gives it away. A litany of names really. The first denoting the demon, the second name that of the demon's master in the abyss, and then its master's master on and on up to the supreme demon lord. Finally, the Baron finishes the full name of the beast and says, We invite you to join our world. He then points to Siba on the altar. We offer this flesh. We ask you to join the soul within, to bond to our world until the end of time. Having finished this intonation, the Baron climbs the dais, picks up a jewel-encrusted dagger, cuts Siba's bare thigh, puts the dagger back on the altar, and begins licking and sucking at the wound. Another member of the congregation steps forward. Oh, that's it! This is a short one! I know! I know you wanted more, but that's it! You're gonna have to sway by game Double Tap to hear more of this cool game. And of course, I told you I'd give you a little trick. One of the things you can do in this game as you unlock achievements and complete chapters, you'll get something called luck points. And with those luck points, you can unlock more mana and more cool skills. You wanna hear me do this? Swing by game Double Tap, and I'll be sure to teach you how to do all these cool stuff. But anyway, that's it for me! Get ready for another good audio listen, and I hope you're having a great time here on Game and Game Double Tap. Take care, and I'll hear you next time.